similar uh, cranial point. When I asked Yamamoto how did he, when we asked Yamamoto how he came to choose in each point in each point, uh, how he found that this point is the kidney and it's got to do with the olfactory, number one, cranial nerve. So he said, I try to uh, think about what happens when I take someone into a dark room when there's no windows and it's sh shut closed, what happens? <coughs> so the first thing that comes up is a, a scent of smell. So smell is actually very, uh, very, very deep in the body, so because of his understanding of Chinese medicine, kidney is very deep, and it's got to be for distant memories, and also if you just, every time you smell something, you straight away remember where you smelt it, and it brings you back to that same mm -hmm. place. So it's uh, so first of all, the scent of smell, slowly, slowly, as your eyes start adapting, your eyes start moving around, in a matter of seconds. So that's how we actually added each cranial nerve to uh, the specific uh, organ. So those one, very, they're very, very simple. Uh, we have here, they're very simple. We have, uh, actually we have one to 12. 12 is sitting on the, on the frontal bone fontanella. So if we take George here. Uh, I don't like his outfit. George, it will finish number 12. Is located on the frontal bone fontanelle, or sutus. Okay, that's where jaw, where it'll yeah. finish. If you look in your pictures, that's where it'll, it'll get to. And it all depends what the distance is from patient to patient. So, and it's also one centimeter. Actually, the brain points. So we know where it finishes. It goes back to, and the brain points and the cerebrum points. Six of these points. Uh, overlap in the brain points. So we have the four cerebrum points, the uh, cerebrum, and then we have the cerebellum. So we have, it's actually the kidney, bladder, PC, heart, stomach, and small intestine, uh, sorry, four. So <coughs> kidney, uh, uh, kidney, uh, bladder, <coughs> pericard, and heart are all located in the cerebr cere uh, cerebrum area. And stomach and sanjiao are, loca are located in the cerebellum area. <coughs> so that's an overlapping. <laughs> so you can use when you come and die. So I bring this to when you diagnose the area. Let's say you come and you come to our patient. Uh, this is a general idea. What you, when you let me? I'm coming back here. Okay. So these points. So the same point, the same neck diagnosis, you can do, and instead of choosing the, the points of the epsilon, you can choose the cranial nerves. Now the cranial nerves work the same as the epsilon points, but they have one thing, in, uh, one thing that the epsilon points don't do. They affect the cranial nerves. So if you have a patient suffering from fa uh, facialis, okay, it's better to use cranial nerve number the the small intestine, which is seven, more than the small intestine of the epsilon. You with me? Because it has yeah. an extra added to its uh, function. Or if you have a patient who's got a problem with the eyes, so it's better to use the bladder, the bladder of the uh, optic uh, cranial nerve for the eye. And you have a motor, sometimes you see him, he can come to a patient, you'll see the bladder is sensitive, and then you ask him, do you have any urinary problems? So he said, yes. And do you have any eye problems? He said, yes. He always felt there's a correlation. He used it as a diagnosis, kind of a diagnosis and mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is very just important to know, and they just overlap. So if you want to sometimes be specific, uh, so just know that sometimes when you're using the cranial nerves, you also apply the needle into the brain point. So you don't differ differentiate yeah. this, now I work on the cranial, now I work on a brain point. <coughs> uh, that's a general idea, that's why, why I stopped in the middle and came back. That's the idea you've got to go with. Now I'm going to give it from our uh, interpretation, more on how we work with the technique. Uh, we have the diagnosis, <coughs> large intestine form, and etc. Sometimes what me and Abby do, before we even start, this is from my experience, and we see how it cor correlates with the brain points and the epsilon uh, and the cranial nerve uh, points. 
this is from my experience. Uh, maybe by practice you understand it a bit more. So you can just write it down now, and maybe later it will come. What we do, we come and we look at the, we do the same diagnosis of the, the palms of the hand, but before we even go to the neck diagnosis, we pinpoint the brain points. We pinpoint the brain points of the diagnostic area. If any side comes up, we go to the the four organs or the six organs on a low, it depends. If it's the cerebrum comes up or the cerebellum comes up, I will go and pinpoint on the same side those organs. Because they correspond with the brain. So I want to be more precise in treating the brain points. If I had the brain points were divided in the beginning to three, or the cerebrum and cerebellum were divided into uh, actually uh, two, point, two, uh, two zones, now I'm taking these zones and I'm breaking them down. So what we do, we uh, kind of found the correspondence, we go check the brain points. Cerebrum, cerebellum. If any of those points come up, we pinpoint the neck diagnosis according, but only specific points. We only pinpoint the, the, the kidney, bladder, heart, and uh, heart and uh, uh, PC heart. That's if I see the cerebellum. Uh, cerebrum comes up, and if the cerebellum comes up, I pinpoint the stomach and the sangia. Are you with me? And after I've done that, I go back to the, to the palms and I do the, what we learned before. But that, write it down now if you can't understand it. What is more important is what I said at the beginning. Instead of, uh, instead of doing the epsilon points, you can do the cranial nerve points. Okay? Uh, and the basal ganglia is in the middle. And we, and we, do, it, we do it quite often has the same effect. <coughs> now what I, you'll come up to you understand that cranial nerves have a peripheric A and have a peripheric nerve on the effect of it. There's a certain state where the cranial nerves are affecting the peripheral uh, nerve, nerve system. So actually what we have started to see that when the problem is, a, we'll take a facialis for a problem. We have a nerve coming from the brain and you have the the central brain, uh, central nerve system. So when we want to, uh, uh, if the facialis is from, uh, from the central nerve system, let's say stroke, we'll work with the cranial nerve, the cranial point. If we know he has facialis, which is, can be from flu, so actually the peripheric uh, nerve system will have been damaged. And then we'll use the epsilon point. So the epsilon, the epsilon, the epsilon oh, point, more yeah. in the cranial what nerve, is it? Uh, it's like yeah, Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Okay. Yeah. Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Face and, uh, okay. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is the epsilon points more affect the if they have an effect on the brain, they affect more the peripheric system than the uh, central nerve system. Sorry, so would you use the cranial points for, the nerve points for palsy? Or? Yes, but it depends if palsy comes, let's say, from a pathogen, 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 or if, uh, if it's from stroke. So stroke is a damage more to the uh, central nerve system. Okay. It's the two, uh, what you do in all neuro neurology, depends where it comes from. Now, let me just use this a second. In what we wrote down in your booklets, you have the number of cranial nerves, you have the organ which it is associated with, and you have the, uh, the name, and what it does, what the, each one it does. So it helps uh, a lot. Uh, just for example, just for example, a connection of these points, one of my patients was suffering from uh, <coughs> problems in swallowing in speech. His cranial nerve number 12 was damaged. And when I used to come palpable, even needle, the area of cranial nerve number 12, he used to feel a sensation in his uh, anus. And the reason is why, because the anus and the, the large intestine is connected to number, uh, it was unbelievable. No, no, I feel it. Uh, that was the uh, pleasant sensation <laughs> when I used to needle. But it used to help his swallowing problem as well. So there is a connection. Or even with uh, so that, these are the same understanding. 
So now, just to know where the points are located, <laughs> if you can see Avi, his head, he is going to recede over here, so you can see the... You can feel the bone, okay? You can feel the fontanella, okay? Now what you want to do, every movement of your finger actually puts you in a different cra in a cranial nerve. It's millimeters, one from a, or centi a half a centimeter apart, one to another. They actually overlap each other. So if you also want to you know if you need a direct uh, cranial nerve, you have this, uh, Let's say if a patient's a Bell's palsy and you want to know that you've needled the exact point, so suddenly just go to small intestine, feel small intestine, even if it's not sensitive, just to see the tension of the muscle. And then I'll go back, look for the point, needle it, and see I want to see a change in small intestine. That makes, for me, I'm sure that I've needled the correct uh, cranial nerve. Okay? So, and now what I want to do, what, I, what you want to look at, first you want to see what the size why? If he has Bell's palsy. Uh, why? Why does that check? Like? Because I want to. Because they're so close yeah. to each other, they half a centimeter away. If you look here, you can see that yeah. they're very close, overlapping, maybe overlapping. So I want to know if I'm in number four or number five. Even if I move my finger, so I just feel the uh, feel the area of the diagnosis, and then I go found the needle, and I needle it, and I want to see a change in the texture of the muscle. I want to see the muscle go down. Or the ten if there's no sensitivity, and oh, I just... You're talking about the... Yeah. yeah. Okay, that okay. helps me make sure that I'm in the correct area, okay. which is different than from Chinese scalp acupuncture. You know, you don't really know if you're in the motoric area of the face or the sensoric area of the face. This is actually telling me, yes, you're affecting the direct uh, point. Thank you. And... So what I'm looking for, so the first thing you want to do is see what the distance is from the, the upper part of A <coughs> to this area. So you just, what I sometimes do, just feel it. And then it's, because some people, it depends on if it's uh, further apart or closer apart. Once I felt it, I know that number 12 sits on the, on the, the sutures of the bone, where the bone connects, where the frontal and the parietal meet. And then what I do, if it's, if it would be here, then I know the, the movement will be a lot closer to each other, a lot more smaller. If I know it's this distance, I know that I'll be, it'll be half a centimeter. And you just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now I'm sitting on the ball. How do you, how do you tell? What, uh... You can feel it. If you press down, sometimes your fingers go lightly. Is it when, like, if you go from the back to the front, there's a little dip? No, you got it's easier if we take you val here. Close. Mm -hmm. you, you can eat, if you come all closer, it's actually where the hair, you can see it, this area. This area, you can feel over here. The frontal bone is here. Mm -hmm. It's all, and it goes like this. Can you, you can mm -hmm. see the change, a bit of the frontal bone, and then the parietal. Here it's actually more narrow, and then it goes wide. That's another way of looking at it. It's a narrow bone, and then you have the parietals are wider. The parietal comes from this side, and the, the frontal bones come from here. They're a lot. It's like a triangle. Can you see it? And, and also, when you go on the midline, <coughs> the midline is bumpier more, or it's more, uh, more round, is it? Raised. More raised. And as you go a bit to the side, <coughs> when you have the sides, you see holes on the side, that's where the bone is actually needed. It's, got a, it's practicing. Uh, usually people tend to push down hard on the hair. Just go lightly and you'll slowly, slowly you'll feel that uh, the soul, the sutra, sutra of the a of area. So it's kind of like the first divot that you yeah, fall into. Yeah. 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 So that's the first divot you want to look. And then, and then, so the same idea, you go. Now there are, this, this area when you needle is a lot less, a lot more sensitive in needling for the patient than the, than the epsilon areas. So when you needle here, it doesn't make a difference. Whatever's more comfortable for you, if it's on the epsilon or the cranial, it makes no difference when you come to the, ipsi, the neck diagnosis. But I used to, when I started my practice, I was mainly using the cranial nerves. 
it was more comfortable for me. Later on, I started also using the Epsilon. And also sometimes, if you know you're in the right point of the, let's say, for example, we're speaking about the small intestine, it was sensitive, and I know I'm in the correct point on the Epsilon, but still I've got the 50%, someone asked me that, 50%, mm -hmm. decre uh, decrease uh, in pain, so I can add the cranial nerve as well, and it'll help even more. And pain. vice versa? And vice versa. <coughs> Okay, now the cranial nerve. So like I said, this area is more sensitive. This area is less sensitive. This area bleeds more. Oh, I never spoke about uh, bleeding. Sometimes when you take out the needles, there is blood. Especially if you have patients taking blood thinners. This area will bleed more. So uh, don't worry about it. It's not like the Chinese medicine that I've, uh, uh, that there's heat coming out. We look here and it's just bleeding. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason of that. And when you don't want your patient to speak too much, needle him on the epsilon because he can't speak. The temporal muscle is being. No, I don't do it. No, but, uh, but uh, in general, when you, when you needle the epsilon point, the patient will sometimes found that it's very difficult for him to speak because the temporalis. A, a temporalis muscle is moving, so it's contracting. So it's contracting on the needle, so it will be a bit painful. It bites. Yeah. What? It bites him. Bite, bites him. That's the way to tell him I want you to be quiet. Right? <laughs> so what we're going to do, we, we're going to go, uh, so the second group, what we're going to do, the first group, the second group that never practice, or can practice, and we're going to...